by integrating Rickenbacker guitars into the gaming industry using Raptorium assets, I mean, it's it's just the beginning. We're we're touching on something here that's uh, every time we every time we talk, we're we're expanding even more into what's possible. I mean, the potential for creating unique and valuable digital items uh, such as Rickenbacker guitars is limitless on blockchain. It really is. I'm really excited to see uh, how game developers will leverage the technology uh, to enhance the gaming experience. It it really is something that's uh, that that is set to grow and and, it, and it's set to be really something huge. I mean, uh, yeah. I think I think it'd be useful if we if we touched on uh, some different use cases for for the Rick guitars in games. Uh, being that there's that, that there's so many different games out there, I mean, obviously the first ones we can think about is is what has already been done, such as Guitar Hero, which is a rhythm-based game where you know players can can play the guitar and earn points. But in a blockchain uh, environment, players can earn, collect, and play with digital versions of the Rickenbacker guitars and gain value through that. Uh, on a decentralized marketplace the players they could unlock um, different models of Rickenbacker guitars of, as they progress through the game each guitar could have like um, unique sound qualities as Hunter was talking about and also visual effects like uh, there's probably like some epic Rick guitar that's sort of the glows or something like that they Man. have one. Oh, do they, they? Yeah, one. yeah yes they do it lights up Oh, really yep. things like yeah, that it does. things like that it will does. make the gameplay more engaging and more fun you know i mean there is a lot of <laughs> thinking with the brakes of judgment off <laughs> what what else do you think we could do charlie was mentioning about you know the adventure and the rpg games as well the way i see it like in it in an adventure or a role-playing game, which is obviously an RPG game. Rickenbacker guitars could be magical items or uh, or like powerful artifacts uh, that players can find and use. Players, uh, I don't know, they, they might embark on quests. You know, quests to find rare Rickenbacker guitars, each with its own set of magical abilities or uh, enhancements. For example, um, for example, like Paul McCartney's Rick might boost a character's charisma or provide special powers during battles. Uh, I think that'd be really cool. Um, what if, and, and the sound, the distinctive sound, because the tuning that Paul does might be different from someone else. Well, yeah. Because just like Keith Richards and his, his, uh, open open g i think it is his his guitars are open g and five string yeah it's a, it's a lot of very different but yeah it opens up a lot it opens up a lot i mean if if if, if these guitars are difficult to find in the game players can actually showcase their rare finds and even transfer them to you know other games that support raptorium assets as well Another thing that I've, I was thinking of um, is imagine virtual concerts and social platforms where, for example, in virtual worlds or social platforms, players can use Rickenbacker guitars to perform in virtual concerts or jam sessions with friends. Bye. So, so, um, you know, everyone's got, everyone's got one of these, well, not everyone, but it's, it's, uh, it's getting more and more popular now. Yeah. So this is a quest three. Mm -hmm. Imagine linking your quest three up to the Raptorian blockchain and loading up your Rickenbacker guitars and you can perform with the Beatles or you could perform with your friends using your virtual reality rick guitar which has been laser scanned onto the blockchain and read by the vr headset that is something that that is uh 
that is cool i mean players can also customize their avatars with different rickenbacker guitars and perform on stage with big bands can earn rewards based on their performance and how other people in the virtual re environment might might rate their their playing ability in in the vr uh, environment and gain points based on audience engagement if we can integrate uh, the raptorium uh, wallet with the game with some games that that are uh, supported in that sort of environment such as on uh, some of the metaverses that are on there which are very popular at the moment i might add it would be really uh, a really nice thing to see or even just a standalone uh, game uh, based on uh, maybe a v vr version of winterbourne which is entirely possible and not too much difficult in uh, unreal engine integration into a, a virtual reality environment I think there's just literally a few things uh, that has to be calibrated for that to happen, but it's entirely possible. Um, I think it'd be kind of, don't you think it'd be kind of cool? Check out Iron Maiden's game, and then see how what we just described might work with that. They might go, ooh, <laughs> you never know. Yeah, for real. Uh, maybe we should. Dial the phone. Hi. <laughs> exactly. Maybe we should speak to them. And the other, the other thing that that, I mean, my my wife plays bass. And if you're, if you're familiar at all with the, with the Wrecking Crew, Wrecking Crew was in the 60s and into the 70s. They were L.A. studio musicians. They were, they were the ones who actually played on the albums. Oh, did, so Carol, they were like the session musicians, yeah? Yes, okay. yes. Just like Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin was a session musician okay. along with Richie Blackmore and some of the great guitarists from, from my rock and roll era. Yeah. But these were on... I mean, these, these musicians, including Glenn Campbell, which many people probably don't even know who he is, but let me tell you something about Glenn. Eddie Van Halen called up Alice Cooper and said, hey, can you give me Glenn's number? I want to take some guitar lessons from him. That man could play. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it gives, it gives some interesting possibilities for guitarists like Glenn Campbell, who's gone, Eddie Van Halen's gone. Mm -hmm uh there's some really interesting things that their their legacy can kind of go on in different ways i'm just i'm really going off into it well now that you a, now that you're that's talking what we're about, supposed to do now that you're talking about uh learning to play the guitar that's something else um i'm thinking educational games uh that can teach players uh, to play the guitar like a certain you know famous guitarist yeah. and incorporate the Rickenbacker guitars, uh, guitar models as part of the learning experience. I mean, players could progress through various different different lessons and unlock different Rickenbacker guitars as they improve their skills. Each guitar can come with unique lessons and challenges. Um, that that would be that would be cool to see. It was the the musician I was thinking of was Carol Kay. If memory serves, Carol Kay played bass, and and she came up with some of the most iconic bass lines. She was she was an amazing, and she she does or did mm -hmm. uh, guitar. Le I mean, bass lessons. And I was thinking about you know that would be kind of cool, but someone like her. I mean, what about someone like her? She's she's this iconic guitar player, bass player. She has other instruments, but bass is her main, main deal. Mm -hmm. And what about some of these studio musicians, the session musicians that are still out there? Some of them are still playing. Um, how might they take advantage of this? I think that is a video in its own right. And there we have, <laughs> there we have our next video. Maybe we should, yeah, let's do that. That's kind of, why not? You know, I mean, and on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah. By the way, how could Jeremy call No, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a video in its own right. I mean, we could, yes. oh. we could go on and on about that. Uh, yeah, separate to Rickenbacker. Uh, there are so. a lot of people who wish to remain relevant, wish to remain well, relevant. 
Yeah. And, and we're opening up a whole new world for them to continue being relevant for ever. Well, it's, it's a legacy, isn't it? It's, it's, it's yes, relevant indeed. now and it's a, it's a legacy forever. And, and they can assign, they can assign where that income goes and it's traceable. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot to that. And considering how often musicians have been taken advantage of by yep. the recording industry. Mm -hmm. Hello. That's a whole nother show. <laughs> <laughs> and in regards to income, in regards to income, that's something we haven't even talked about. See if, if, if Rick and Backer did, uh, for each guitar that it, that it creates, it, it did like 10,000 assets and placed them on a marketplace. Those assets would be worth, worth something. And on top of the production of the guitar, I'm thinking like the person that owns the guitar has the master asset for that guitar. And that's probably worth the most because it comes with the guitar for the, for the provenance and also the, uh, the, mm -hmm. the anti counterfeiting like we touched on in the last episode, but right. these 9,999 other assets, which were printed when the guitar was created for that, for that exact model of guitar, those can then go onto a marketplace to be traded by users so other users can then use the, 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 those assets uh you know for their games and that generates a whole additional amount of funds uh for rickenbacker on top of the actual initial real world production of the guitar hey let me let me go out on a limb my my somewhat limited technical knowledge but what about renting or leasing an asset using what time is it time locks time lockable Future? transactions yeah that is something that's possible oh so rick could send a an asset for a, a, a guitar to someone who wants to borrow the asset for a short amount of time to play in a game or uh or, or what, whatever use case that we've just talked about Rickenbacker could send the asset to expire in uh, like a week. And then once the week is expired, the asset is no longer usable for the game. And uh, not only that, there is other ways uh, that Rickenbacker can utilize uh, futures transactions with assets. And one of those is if Rickenbacker was to release a line of assets of all different types of guitars and each type of guitar had, for example, a thousand assets for that guitar, each with their own laser scan for users to use in whatever digital areas that they may see fit, then those separate guitars can be issued to the marketplace in a decentralized manner each week on its own so it could be a distributed release of guitars over time which would which would not only save uh rickenbacker time in actually doing this in a manual fashion but it would also give its customers expectations on the exact release date of a new set of assets which would create uh you know excitability and um you, you know looking forward to for, for the for the next guitar to be released on on the marketplace uh so they so they could then load it up in one of their games so that uh, create a sense of urgency is what i'm trying to say yeah so if i'm the executive staff of of rickenbacker what can we do for them i mean I get them on a call they call us and say we want to explore this further how what, how would well, that work for them? the thing is what do you think we know what they need to do right we would jump on a call with them we would help them set up their raptorium assets for their rickenbacker guitars based on what they would like to use them for uh, and that includes how the metadata is laid out uh, depending on whether they're just doing it for uh, anti-counterfeiting and provenance or whether they're doing a bit of both with the games as well and 
the features in, in digital areas around the world on the internet. And then once we once we have all of that information, we can uh, help them get get set up, show them how to use their uh, Raptorium wallet, show them how to mint new assets for for their new guitars, and um, and show them how to link up to NFC if that's the direction that they're going with their with their bodies and their necks. I think the the key is helping companies uh, who are coming on board because this is this is really cutting edge stuff yeah it's it requires hand holding and 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 that will help us get better too it'll Absolutely. help us develop guides and and whether it's videos or mm -hmm. or white papers here's how you do it based on actual experience yep. so yeah and this has been fun those will be released as well uh, as uh as time goes on, a lot of them are already being uh, built and worked on to make things easier for companies to to integrate with us. I mean, we do have the uh, the Wrapped Chat AI that's uh, very useful and does give companies uh, a decent guide on how to integrate with Raptorium assets to improve their operations and uh, whatever whatever that can't help with um we do have uh, a very skilled team of staff who can uh, fill the gaps in for everything else and we'd be willing to help with absolutely anything yeah boy a lot of epic stuff when you take the breaks of judgment off huh big thanks to you all for tuning in for this week's rap to chain reaction episode with rick and backer guitars and gaming it's been an absolute pleasure I have been Paul Mills, uh, this is Hunter Schultz, and uh, we will be back next Thursday for another Raptor Chain reaction uh, for an undisclosed topic this time. And uh, please tune in for that and keep an eye on our YouTube channel. <laughs> they're on it, or they're watching it already, so I don't need to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, make sure you're following us at Raptorium, at Twitter, also known as X, at Instagram and also at Threads. We're also in TikTok at Official Raptorium. And also give this uh, video a follow and uh, and a like as well. That'd be great. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week.